What's up everybody, welcome to another video and I hope you're ready to flex those brain muscles. Sorry it's been a minute, I took a summer class, I was a TA for a summer class, and I spent a lot of time studying for a qualifying exam in analysis that I actually just took, so I was pretty busy, but I'm back with a video and what we're gonna talk about in this video is the definition of the derivative. So this is an important concept that we learn about in calculus. And I remember taking calculus and being able to use this definition to like find derivatives and you know for different applications but never really fully understanding it until I took real analysis so I figured in this video I'll talk about kind of the basic idea and the concept behind this definition we're not going to do any applications or computations or anything like that we're just going to talk about the general idea of what the derivative means and hopefully this helps you if you're taking calculus or you've taken calculus better understand this so first we need to look at a important preliminary which is slope so if you're already very comfortable with algebra and the idea of slope just skip ahead that's fine but we're going to talk about slope because it comes up a lot when we talk about the definition of the derivative and so does this idea of average rate of change which i'm going to touch on a little bit here as well so if i gave you some function like this f of x equals 3x plus 2 and you could think of this as y if you want we're going to use this notation right f of x because this is a function if I were to ask you to find the slope of this function, you could probably tell it to me without even having to write anything down because it's already in this really nice form, which is f of x equals mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept, right? So you could look at this function and say the slope of that function is three. But what if I just gave you the graph of a linear function? So something like this, and I just gave you a linear function like this, and just gave you the graph of a linear function and said, find the slope of this function just given this graph. How would you approach that? Well, there's a couple different things you could do, but one of the things you could do is actually pick two points. So we'll pick this point. We'll call this x1. So that means that this is f of x1. And we'll pick this point here and we'll call that x2. So that means this is f of x2. And then what you could think to yourself is, well, I know that slope, so we'll call that m just to be consistent. This is the change in our outputs or y values or f of x values, right? We'll write it as delta y. That's usually how it's written. The change in our outputs divided by the change in our input values, which are x in this case, right? So what does this mean? Well, the change in our y values is just the difference between f of x1 and f of x2. So I'm just gonna write f of x2 minus f of x1, and then the change in our x values is just the difference between those two x values. So I'll write x2 minus x1. And yes, these were chosen arbitrarily. You could do, you could switch them around, but you need to be consistent if you do that. So if you do that, you need to write f of x1 minus f of x2 divided by x1 minus x2. You gotta be consistent. But this works and this gives us the slope of this function just by looking at the graph and picking any two points, right? But what I want to point out that I think is pretty interesting is that this equation, this delta y over delta x, is also used to find average rate of change, right? So the average rate of change between these two points, one of them being x1 f of x1 and the other one being x2 f of x2, is given by this equation, which is the same thing in this case as the slope of this function. So why is that? Why is it that the average rate of change between any two points on a line gives us the slope? And the reason why is because linear functions have a constant slope, meaning the slope is some real number, like three, five, negative two, right? Some real number. So that means no matter which two points we pick and find the average rate of change between, it's just gonna give us the slope of the line because the, the values are changing at a constant rate, right? So what we're gonna see is this isn't always the case. When we look at functions that aren't linear, like curves, so like quadratic functions, rational functions, when we look at those functions, if I find the average rate of change between two points and then look at two other points, those rates of change a lot of times are different, right? And that's when the derivative comes into play. It becomes useful because it allows us to talk about rates of change and slope when we're looking at functions that aren't simple linear functions, right? When we're looking at curves, quadratic functions, rational functions. 
So we're going to use this idea of average rate of change, and we're going to use this to hopefully better understand the definition of the derivative. So like I said, when we're looking at linear functions, we can pick any two points. We can find the average rate of change between those two points, and that's going to give us the slope of that function because linear functions have a constant slope. So now let's look at a function that doesn't have a constant slope. So this is a function whose graph is a curve, so it could be something like a quadratic function, a polynomial, something like that. And I've just plotted some, some points here. This is x naught, f of x naught, et cetera. Right? And we're going to look at the average rates of change between these points and see how they're different depending on the points we pick. And there's a cool way we can actually visualize average rate of change. Because one way you could look at it is, okay, the x is changing by this much, the y's are changing by this much, but then here the x's are changing by like the same amount and the y's change a lot more. So the average rates of change are different. But an even better way to visualize this, in my opinion, is using something called a secant line, which is an important vocabulary word for the definition of the derivative. And what a secant line is, is it's a line that intersects two points on a curve, right? So this would be our secant line here. This line, I draw it intersecting those two points and I can extend it and there we go. That's our secant line. Let's see how good of a line I can draw. I think that's as good as it's gonna get. So that would be the secant line going through these two points, right? And the cool connection we can make between average rate of change and these secant lines is that the average rate of change between these two points is the same as the slope of this secant line going through these two points, right? So the slope of a secant line gives us average rate of change. Let's look at this secant line here. Ooh, that looks pretty good actually, let's see. So secant line there. So again, the slope of this secant line is gonna give us the average rate of change between these two points. So as we can visually see, from x1 to x2, our function is changing a lot more than from x0 to x1, right? And hopefully we can notice that this pattern is gonna continue. If I drew like an x3 up here, that line's gonna be even steeper. So what we can say about this function is that the slope is not constant, it's actually increasing. As we go further along the function, the slope gets steeper and steeper and steeper, right? And as we take values closer to x naught, the slopes of these lines are gonna get closer and closer to uh, the slope of what we call a tangent line, okay? So a tangent line at a point, we've already talked about secant lines, the tangent line at a point is a line that goes through exactly one point, right? Or at least in within a little neighborhood. It could intersect somewhere else in some other area, but it goes through exactly this point and this little interval around that point. So it's gonna look something like this. This is our tangent line. Sorry, it's getting kinda clustered in there. Hopefully you can see it. That's our tangent line. So the cool thing is that we've already made a connection. We've said the slope of these secant lines is the same thing as average rate of change. So it turns out that the slope of a tangent line, right, at a point is the same thing as something we call an instantaneous rate of change at a point, which is actually what our derivative is, right? So the derivative of this function, which we notate as f prime, at this point, x naught, is equal to the slope of the tangent line at that point. Right? So there's a few different ways we can think about derivative. Instantaneous rate of change, the slope of a curve at a point, the slope of the line tangent at a certain point. Sometimes you can think of it as velocity when you're dealing with those kind of position and time problems. But what we can notice is that these secant lines, as we take points closer and closer to x naught, are getting more and more similar to that tangent line. And we've understood this idea, hopefully in calculus by now, of a limit, and that's exactly what this is. The limit of these secant lines is this tangent line, and similarly, the limit of the slopes of these secant lines is equal to the slope of the tangent line, which is exactly what we're trying to find, right? That's our definition of the derivative. So if we could somehow write a limit expression here that represents the limit of the slopes of these secant lines, then we'll be good to go with our definition.
And it turns out the way we can do that is by considering some arbitrary distance from x naught. So I'm going to erase a little bit, but I'm going to keep this up because I feel like it's still a cool visualization of these lines sort of approaching the tangent line. And how we normally do that is we say, well, let's take some arbitrary distance past this x naught. So I'll actually use this same point here and I'll write, okay, well, this is x naught plus some distance, which usually we use the letter h, just kind of as a convention, right? So that would make this output f of x1, I'll cross this out for now, we're now going to call this f of x naught plus h, okay? And now what's going to happen is as this h gets closer and closer to zero, right, what happens is this point gets closer and closer to this x naught, and that's exactly what we want to happen, right? Because think about it, the slope of each secant line is going to be that change in y over change in x. Okay, so we can use this idea, but use it with these points here in a limit expression, and that's going to give us the limit of the slopes of these secant lines, right? So what we can say is, remember, we want this h to go to zero because we want to take the limit as this point approaches the x naught. So this h is going to go to zero. And then what we could say is, well, let's write our delta y over delta x expression in here, right? So let's consider f of, let's see, what's going to be our x2, right? We'll make this our x2, f of x naught plus h minus f of x naught divided by what? Well, x naught plus h minus x naught. So we get a nice little cancellation here where we have x naught minus x naught. So we're just going to be left with h on the bottom. And this is the definition of the derivative. And this is the way I think of it, is that it's the limit of the slopes of these secant lines, right? Which ends up being the slope of the tangent line at the point, which is the derivative, right? Again, you can also think of it as an instantaneous rate of change. And one video I really recommend watching is Three Blue, One Brown, I think is the name of the channel. Hopefully I said that right. But they have a video on this sort of paradox of the derivative because it's really trippy to think about an instantaneous rate of change because change is something that happens over time, right? So what does an instantaneous rate of change mean? How can a change happen in just an instant, like over no time? And the way he explains it is that this instantaneous rate of change is the best approximation for a rate of change around a given point, right? So if you give me some h that's really small, I can use this derivative to approximate you know, the y value that I get from adding that small amount of h to here. Hopefully that makes sense. Again, go watch that video. Hopefully this helps. This is kind of a hard topic to explain, but I did the best I could. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Keep flexing those brain muscles, and I'll see y'all later. Hey, just kidding. There's one more thing I want to point out. So this is the instantaneous rate of change, or the derivative of this function at this point. So from this, we're going to get a real number, because the slope of a tangent line, right, the slope of any line is a real number. So this is going to give us a real number. But we can continue differently, and we can express the instantaneous rate of change of this function as a function. And to do that, instead of putting an x naught here, like a specific value along the x-axis, we just leave it as an x, right? We keep it arbitrary. And then instead of ending up with a real number, we end up with a function, and we can use that function to plug in x values and get the slope of the tangent line at those different given x values, right? So remember, when we're taking the slope of, a, of the curve at the point, we get a real number. Right, when we plug in an actual value. But when we keep it arbitrary in terms of x as a function, we get a function. That's it.